Pat Love here with Pat's Two Cents, here to discuss a serious dilemma that many of us suffer from, many of you suffer from severely, and that is rage, murder, hatred, revenge, spite, hurt, damage, agony, insecurity, the list just goes on and on. And what does that stem from? Bullying, abuse, verbal, psychological abuse, physical abuse, molestation, rape, sodomy. We don't always realize how seriously and deeply damaged we are. But let me tell you this. There's a story that I just got through watching. It was a phenomenal movie. It's very well done, very well acted. And there's a scene I'm going to play for you. And I want you to hear an example of how words can kill a spirit. And I ask if any of you recognize this type of verbal abuse, if any of you hear yourself through this man speaking to his son, I pray that you get help. I really pray you get help because I'm going to tell you this. This may sound insulting, but if life has turned you into a monster and you're abusing your child verbally, you're creating an even worse monster. You may have beat up and hurt a child or your lady or your, or your husband, but some people take that abuse a step further and hurt the people they really do love and they don't even remember doing it. And I'm going to share this. Now, I told you the story in the other video, quick, quick reference about how what happened to me in elementary school was these kids started up a fight with me and this young lady who I liked. We were both in the third or fourth grade, I believe, eight or nine years old, developing ahead of our time where the other kids were just looking like little kids. She and I looked like junior high school girls with little boobs developing and, and muscle legs. We were the same height. We were taller than all the kids in the school. And as far as I was concerned, this lady, Margarita, a young lady, girl, kid, was a very nice person. She really was. She didn't start any trouble with anybody. And as I told the story before, I hit her by mistake. Ended up in a tussle. I refused to fight her, but I apologized because it was unintentional on my part. The kids pushed us back and forth in the schoolyard after school. We ended up pulling hair. You know how girls start out doing that. Well, my hair was probably about this long, but her hair was down her back. So she grabbed one wrap with mine and she was hurting my head. I grabbed two or three wraps with her hair, and because I was athletic, I walked her over to the wall. I told the story in the previous video. I walked her over to the wall, and I literally started bashing her head against the wall simply to make her let go of my hair because it was hurting. All I wanted to do was stop her from hurting me. wasn't angry. Now, I don't know what happened, but a switch went off inside of me. Now, I'm going to share this with you. When I came up, I felt like my mother didn't love me. My mother didn't want me. My mother was embarrassed by me. I was a curse to her life. And if she had just been able to keep all her other kids and not be bothered with me, she would have been a happy camper. But because I was now on the scene through my father, Her life was ruined. She made me feel like a freak by the things she said to me. The way I looked, the way I was built, as far as I was concerned, everything was wrong with me because my mother said so in so many words. Now, she loved me enough to take care of me, but my mother had just had a nervous breakdown a few years after I was born. And as she was recovering, she was spewing all of her poison out on me. So I was the one person in the family who couldn't defend myself, a little kid. 
but it did a lot of damage. There was a root of rejection that God had to uproot and deliver me from in my, I think I was in my 40s, in my living room, saved since 27. But in my 40s, God decided it was time to do a healing and a deliverance service with me and him. And he became my psychologist just like that. Now, in this scenario where Margarita and I are pulling hair, we're up against the wall. I'm making a description again because I want you to really see this. We're up against the wall. Now, all this rage that's in me from all the kids making fun of me for years and my mother making me feel like a freak, an unwelcome freak that she felt gave her the creeps every time I wanted to give her a hug. Um, she said those words. Yeah. So God healed me from that as in my 40s when he uprooted this the thing of rejection. But before then, when I was a kid, I suffered from a lot of that. It's a very painful thing to think that your own mother doesn't even want you, is ashamed of you, uh, wishes you were never born. It makes you wish you were never born. Now, and you long for your mother's love and affection, but if they tell you, you make them feel, you know, you give them the creeps. What do you do with that? How do you process it? Well, this scenario that I'm talking about here was 10 times worse. Abuse can cause people to have multiple personality disorder. And they switch from one station to the next as they switch from one personality to the next personality. And each personality has a conscience and an awareness of its own, while the other personalities have no awareness. So one personality can count ABC while the other personality has no memory of what ABC has done. Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, this is what happened to me. When she and I were against the wall fighting after school because we were pushed into a fight, neither one of us wanted. I, my mind said, get her off of my hair, it hurts. Now she had one rap of mine. I was, a, you know, she just had one rap. But I was able, one, two, three, I remembered that. I got a death grip on her hair. And I grabbed her hair and her shoulder and walked her over to the brick wall, which we were only about three or four feet from. And I took my hand and I, with her hair wrapped in me with a death grip, and I bashed her head up against the brick wall to make her stop hurting me, hurting my hair. Okay, now, as I'm doing that, a switch goes off. Now, I wasn't angry at the wall. I was hurting physically, but I was not angry. But something switched. I had no awareness of this. I don't know that there's a switch it's switching over to another station. I don't know what's going on. Never happened again in my life, and I hope it never does. But all of a sudden, Instead of being right there at the wall, I'm way over about 25 to 50 feet, like from the gutter to the front door of a house. I'm way over to in, in the middle of the schoolyard. We start out, there's about 13 people around us, 13 kids, no adults. I switch stations. I'm in a whole different reality now. We're in a whole different location and a time span. And there are adults all around us, male and female, and a whole slew of kids. I don't know where they came from. How did they suddenly get here? How did we suddenly get in this part of the yard? And on top of that, my question was, why is Margarita bent over with tears running down her face? Neither one of us are crying at the wall. We just had hair. You see what I mean? Now, this is what I want you to hear. This is how dangerous pent-up anger is, how dangerous unresolved issues and e emotional hurts from the past. It can turn you into a monster 
with you not even being aware. Now, this was about a man who killed his daughter and didn't even know he had done so because he was verbally abused by his father, psychologically abused by his father. It's horrible. Listen to the words he had to listen to. He's remembering this oh, now. God. He's mad now. Got it? You dumb, stupid, ignorant boy. Now from now on, you're going to do exactly what I say. Is that clear, boy? Maybe you're just deaf and dumb. No, Daddy. No, Daddy. Well, you got to be. Because nobody could be as dumb as you are unless there was something wrong in there. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Please, what? Look at you. you know, I'm embarrassed to be seen with you. Can you imagine somebody saying that to their son? Can you imagine that type of verbal abuse? Can you imagine hearing that day in and day out? This boy is being forced out in the middle of the night, on a cold night, not even being allowed to wear a jacket. He could have gotten pneumonia and died. But did Daddy care? No. Daddy just wanted to be me, for whatever reason. Oh, come on. I'm ha having a problem trying to get these movies together. I want you to hear this. Listen to this. Down in the pants and knees, and you're gonna cut this grass all night. And you ain't gonna eat, and you ain't gonna sleep until every blade of grass is cut. You understand me, boy? Ah! So cold. Now, how many of you do that to your children? How many of you tell your kids they're worth nothing? You wish they had never been born. You should just take them out because they're not worth the, the oxygen that's in the air. How many of you put your child down and punish them and chain them down in the basement and lock them up in the closet and beat them and beat them and beat them physically and molest them sexually and psychologically screw with their heads and intimidate them and hurt their feelings again and again and again, how many of you do that? You don't need to have kids. Because what you might be, you might be screwy in the head. You might be mean and vindictive and sadistic, like just loving the, the idea of hurting someone else. A defenseless little child. You're not picking on somebody your size who can punch you back in your face. No, you're picking on a little kid which also makes you a coward and a bully. And you're his parent? And you're going to talk down to, to your child like that? You're going to treat that child like that? Male or female? One time, a lady I knew told me she saw a man knock a, a crutches out from under his daughter who was wearing a cast from a broken leg. Hmm, I wonder how she got that broken leg. And he kicked her in the stomach and kicked her in the leg and told her to get up on those crutches and go get him a beer. Now, why do you think we have so many crazy people in the world? Bipolar disorder, emotional disturbance, emotional retardation, multi-personality disorder, schizophrenia, you're creating monsters. You're creating mental cripples. What are you doing? Why? God healed me from my root of rejection. He healed me from the longing and the need for my mother's affection. He healed me from her words. I ask those of you who have been victimized, please go to God. He can remove every single hurt. And it hurts me to feel how much you've been hurt. And for those of you who are doing the hurting, please get help. Go to God for your help. 
That's a rage inside of you that Satan will use one day and you will never be able to stop it. You will sow to the wind, reap the whirlwind, and all hell will break loose in your life and your children's life. And your children may do what this man's son did, kill. Only the man ended up thinking he was killing his father and shot his daughter to death. Is that what you think is a powerful ending for your uh, controlling spirit, for your dominance, for your oh your intimidation, your cruel your cruel words? Is that what you're proud of? Causing your child to become a monster? Lord, Lord help you. Lord help your child as he helped me.